Hi, Marcel. Hi, Tammy. Thank you for having me. Managing attorney at Velauza and Associates, Kenda Velauza and film Hi, Kenda. Hi, Tammy. And film director and producer Tariq Nasheed with us today. Hi, Tariq. How are you, beloved? Good to see you. Just fine. You give him that. You giving me that Ian Levan Zant today, huh? That hit me with the before <laughs> it. I feel you. I feel you. So, um, the the first question I always ask because this show is the business of being black, and that's why should black people care? Why should black people care if immigrants enter into America? Samuel, let's kick things off with you. Well, we should care because obviously, you know folks entering the country uh, play a significant role on uh, whether it's uh, progress or uh, or hindrance of the country. Um, but of course, the one key thing we have to keep in mind, however, uh, um, immigrants play a, a, a positive role in, in, in the development of, of the country. I think the key thing is we want to make sure these folks are uh, entering illegally and going through the legal process. But one thing that, does, that should not get lost is these folks are even places where they have faced, you know, hardship, uh, severe hardship, whether financial or otherwise. Um, so that's something that we should appreciate. Uh, but certainly I am uh, uh, for a proponent for, you know, you know, having, you know, folks coming through the legal process, ensuring that they obtain their proper documentation because, you know, these folks play a significant role and they all, you know, can at times become productive members of society. Marcel, why should Black people care if immigrants enter into the U.S.? We should definitely care because study after study, whether they're from conservative entities or liberal entities, have shown that the group that is most harmed by immigration, illegal and legal, are Black Americans, mm -hmm. especially Black American men who just hold a high school diploma or less. It has been shown to correlate with as much as a 30 to 60% decline in wages, a 10 to 20% increase in incarceration rates, it's been shown to have a detrimental impact on the marriage rates of Black Americans. Not only that, it diverts resources that should be going into impoverished majority Black neighborhoods to immigrants. One study done by the Washington Post that is usually considered a liberal entity done April 8, 2021, said that the U.S. government has been spending about $60 million a day housing unaccompanied minors alone. That's not taken into consideration illegal immigrants that are going into hospitals, that are using other programs from the government. So we should definitely care as Black Americans because our needs are not being provided for. And it is an insult to provide for the needs of people, especially those who have entered our country illegally. Wow. Uh, you laid out some uh, interesting facts there. Tariq, let's get down to it. Why should Black people care if, if immigrants enter into the U.S.? We have to understand why immigration really became a thing on a massive scale. We live in a, a culture of systematic white supremacy. Part of systematic white supremacy is to thwart any type of progress from foundational Black Americans, meaning the people who built the country, the people who are non-immigrants. Foundational Black Americans, anytime we've made progress, the dominant society would come up with ways to thwart that progress. And they figured out they can thwart that progress by flooding the zone with a lot of immigrant groups that's going to come here and undermine us, this is why several Black leaders and spokespersons going all the way back to Frederick Douglass, Booker T. Washington, and many, many others, they were against immigration because they knew the impact it would have on foundational Black Americans. Kenda, let's go for it. Why should Black people care? I don't think they should care, in all honesty, because immigrants or undocumented immigrants come into this country they are doing jobs that Black Americans wouldn't necessarily do. So I personally don't see why they should care. What? What are those jobs? What do you mean, what are those jobs? They're the ones that work at a chicken farm. Have you ever met a Black American who work at a chicken farm, who work at a yeah. factory? Do you, have you met yeah. them? My, my, my great-grandparents. Hello, my great grandparents did those jobs. My grandparents did those jobs. And okay, you have so those parents. were your grandparents Excuse and your me. great grandparents. But what about now? I'm speaking you about what about a question. Now. You asked the question in Mississippi, 
Forest, Mississippi, and Tar Heel, North Carolina. These are things that just happened a few years ago. They did an ICE raid, and when the illegal immigrants were rounded up and deported like they should have been, guess who was there applying for those jobs? Black and American. I understand, and I understand well, all that you're saying, and I don't know how much contact you make with undocumented immigrants or immigrants for that matter, but I do this as a passion. I do this as a career and undocumented immigrants, they do not, they do not take away from black Americans. First of all, they don't even contrary to what you guys believe that undocumented immigrants that they're uh, they're utilizing the welfare system, they're utilizing food stamps. First of all, as an undocumented immigrant, you cannot even have access to those kinds of, of um, programs that provided by the federal government. That's not and true. I am well, telling you can, that you um, immigrants, yes, you immigrants, can. especially undocumented immigrants, because there's documented immigrants like myself, and then there's undocumented immigrants, but they never do the jobs that Black Americans are doing or want to do. That is what, what, not what, true. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I say something? Center, center, I just want to be, I'm sorry, Sam, I just want to be real quick. Go ahead, Marcel. Center, center for American Progress said that 38% of people employed in construction firms are illegal immigrants. It says that 39% of people who do roofing and drywall are illegal immigrants. It says that 32% of people who do carpentry are illegal immigrants. In exactly. my community, hold exactly. on, excuse me. You keep exactly. trying to change your goalposts. You go ask, ahead, Marcel. No, you ask if illegal. No, if I'm saying Americans, exactly because they're the ones that so, are doing yes, all me. the jobs it, that sorry, Americans do not want to do. I'm hold that thought, you, Linda. Let, let him get his. Let, you, let him get his. When you're losing across. an go argument, ahead. trying to overtalk someone is just a way of admitting you've been defeated. Okay. Um, I've already cited actual incidents of Black Americans signing up the next day for jobs in those same poultry factories that illegal immigrants were doing only because they were allowed themselves to be exploited. Now, Center for American Progress provided data that illegal immigrants make over uh, close to 40% of construction jobs, carpentry jobs. In my area here in rural South Carolina, one of the most common jobs for Black Americans, especially Black American men, is carpentry, is roofing, is painting, and is construction. So you're sitting here and telling me that you don't think Black people will take construction jobs that pay well, electric I'm jobs, so heating and air? That is not if, true. If, if, if I may. Point. Let me get now Samuel in here. Go ahead, Sam, Samuel. Not, Go ahead, if, Samuel. If, if I may, Marcel, I, mean, I, I think what Ken is saying, and, I, and I, I, I agree with her, that that She's not saying that African Americans folks are here or do not are not hardworking people. I think she agreed that they are hardworking. But I think what she's saying is that folks from other countries, such as immigrants, like I'm a son of immigrant, we have a certain appreciation for certain type of work that others here may not may not consider. And I, and I think I think that's the point she's trying to make. And I agree with that point. No, what, what type of what type of appreciation? Because that narrative that you guys will take jobs that we don't want to do that plays into the lazy foundational Black American myth that a lot of people like. Exactly. To no, no, I no. I, I, I think that's, for that's me, the, not, the, the, that's not what any. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. So I want to ask Samuel. Samuel. Uh, hold that thought. Hold that thought. I want to ask Samuel. When you say that Black Americans don't necessarily appreciate certain jobs that immigrants would come and have, what what jobs? Well, if you, if you, jobs and, 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 and I don't think I'm going to sit, sit here and give certain examples of jobs. What I, what I will say to make a to. point is, if, if, if you well, said well, it, you have to give it examples. Exactly. Right? Like, hold that, that thought. Data. Hold that thought. Let him finish. Yeah, yeah. Hit me for a second. So if you if you imagine you have people coming from you know certain countries where they don't have anything compared to what folks here had. So they come, of course, they they'll they be more 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 empty to take a certain position, whether what is a job that that others may 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 may, may not consider. They they'll they'll do anything. And when, when I say any type of work, they'll do any type of work because they appreciate they know look, where I come from, that opportunity is not there at all. You understand okay, what I'm saying? So, so that's that, that's the only point that we're trying to make, and, and it has nothing to do with, with, with a lazy mind, mindset. And, and and I have heard that lazy mindset talk. But that, that, that's not, I think, what we're saying here. Yeah, that's not. What okay, we're so one, one, you just validated my point. They are exploited 
by employers. So that's why it's a harm to Black Americans who will not allow ourselves to be exploited because we fought for the right to get fair wages. They will prefer illegal immigrants because they will allow themselves to be exploited. Two, I will also say, if these illegal immigrants or even the people coming here legally are such hard working, then they can stay and build up their own nations because they're coming to the nations that hard working black Americans, descendant of American slaves built. And yet well, the people, hold on Samuel, the people with the least amount of wealth in this nation are not illegal immigrants, believe it or not. It is black Americans. And let's refrain from using of American legal slaves immigrants. That's who make no as little as $24,000 in wealth. And yet Let me get Samuel in here, Marcel. Go ahead, Samuel. Ma Ma Marcel, your, your point, and, and your, your point, your, your argument ignores the fact that these countries, these folks come from or either one impoverished, lack of significant opportunity. So if you're saying, well, they should stay here and work hard there, but they, there's places, where, I'm from Haiti, for example, right? They have folks graduating with, 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 with uh, attorney to, to be as an attorney. Hold that thought. We got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I'm Tammy Mack. And today, the business of being black is immigration. Is it harmful to America? Please welcome managing attorney at the Elira Law Firm and candidate Prince George's County Councilman at Large, Samuel Q. Elira, educator and South Carolina 6th U.S. Congressional District candidate, Greg Marcel Dixon, managing attorney at Valauza and Associates, Kinda Valauza, and film director and producer, Tariq Nasheed. Um, where we left off, off was uh, the appreciation that black Americans don't have for specific jobs that maybe uh, immigrants would take on. And I do believe that that is um, it, it's a misnomer when it comes to black America. Um, the problem is blacks are Americans and we know what is uh, what should be uh, right and fair and just. And so sometimes those Americans will not accept positions that they know they are being paid lower for than the average rate allows in America. However, if there are immigrants, they will come and the appreciation is not about the job. I think we have to take the job itself out of it. The appreciation has nothing to do with the job. The appreciation is about the wages that's earned for the job. And so if the wages are not the wages that are minimum standard for America, wages, then of course, black Americans, white Americans, and anyone else who is an American will say, oh, hell to the no. I'm not taking that job. It's underpaid. It's it, They're underpaying. But if for if immigrants are to come, they will take those jobs at whatever wages are allowed because they are not documented. And I think that's where we kind of lose a little bit of that appreciation. It's not about the job. It's about the pay. Samuel? So I am, of course, I'm for the efficiency of, of good pay. Nobody wants to do a, 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 a work or a job without having paid properly for it. But I'm America continues to pay uh, undocumented immigrants low wages for the work that they do. And I don't think that's fair. But what, what I, I think the point where we left, left off is if these different countries or places these, folk, these folks arrive from, there are a significant lack of opportunity, whether it's job or, or, or the housing, or just certain opportunity that we don't have, they don't have here in, in America. So if they come, so of course, not to say it's right or wrong, but they will take a certain job that- No, uh, it's wrong. It's not right or wrong. It's wrong. It's They're wrong. being exploited. Undocumented workers are being exploited by America. Well, if and they're I'm not you. thinking that they're being exploited, then how is it exploitation? At the end of the day, when we think about the, the pay, we look as immigrants, we look more so at the transfer rate. Like for instance, I am from Guyana. One US dollar is 200 Guyana dollars. So we come here or undocumented immigrants come here. They don't know about the Fair Wages Act. They don't know anything of the sort. All they know is that they need a job and they need a job real quick in order to take care of themselves and their families. So it's not necessarily, I don't, I don't see how we could blame it on them per se. 
um, in regards to the jobs that they're taking and the pay that they're getting in response well, it's a to a come up job. for you, your, your presence, it's a come up for you. You coming over, it benefits you. Oh, of course. It, it, how does it, it doesn't benefit us. And this yes, is they do, pay. because undocumented immigrants has paid $11.6 billion in taxes in 2017. And no, this no, is no, according no, to the no, Institute no. on Taxation no. and Economic Policy. No. Undocumented but the money immigrants, is extrapolated from us anyway. Not, so it's they the pay money taxes we, and they no. contribute to the American no. economy. Me. Those tax dollars were extrapolated from Foundation of Black Americans. So it's a circular thing. They're not benefiting us by paying the taxes that were taken from us anyway. Exactly. And I also want to say, as a teacher, there are English as a second language programs that immigrants, children of immigrants, usually in the country legally in South Carolina, they put billions of dollars into that program. And guess which department that program is under? the Department of Civil Rights. Which group of people were the people who led to the Department of Civil Rights? My ancestors. Yet, when Black American kids are struggling to read, when they need more support, there are no special programs set aside for us. My people spoke another language. We spoke Gullah. Some of the old people and here that's speak not, and, Gullah and Geechee. It, that's Excuse me, I did not interrupt you. I did not interrupt you. Hold that they thought, spoke, I'm coming to you, Kenda. We spoke please, Gullah please Geechee or C. Allen Creel. They're putting billions of dollars investing in the children of illegal immigrants. Class sizes are exploding. Yet, a lot of those illegal immigrants are not paying taxes to help finance more resources for those schools. Even yeah. more, programs that should be developed for my people, who are the people that built this country. Sam, you talk about us having nothing and no opportunities. Black Americans went through that for centuries. We stayed here and fought for our rights. We are not helping people if they just could come here instead of investing in their own nation or helping our people when they could just import cheap labor instead of investing in American work. Oh, that thought, Marcel. Kinda, go ahead. I was saying that's a, so you're running for office and you're putting yourself in a grave and whether you want to believe it or not, they pay their taxes and they contribute to the U.S. economy. Because I have never met an immigrant, well, an immigrant that came into my office and doesn't have tax returns, right? So we're going to make that very clear that they do contribute. They how do come, contribute how to, come you didn't to the contribute? U.S. economy. Well, that thought, Tariq, let her complete her thought. Go ahead, Kenda. No, I'm done. He could go ahead. Okay, how, how come you didn't contribute those taxes and those contributions to your homeland of Guyana? Because we don't pay taxes in Guyana. Our government deals with it. We have free education. We have free health care. We don't pay taxes. That's why that in my book, place. one of the topics is taxes because it's a very foreign language. Okay, well, I'm, guess what? I'm, Guyana I'm, sounds like a great place to be. So why are some people come over here? Let me say something really quick. It has been I don't know shown. how quick you're going to say it, Marcel. But uh, say it. I want <laughs> to say And let's not put the phone on. on. You say Hold on. Let, let, me, let, me have, let, me, let me hear what Kenda... Let's not put the phone on who, Kenda? Go ahead. No, I was saying, let's not put the focus on me because at the end of the day, I am a documented immigrant. And believe it or not, I am going... I, like Samuel said, we don't have opportunities granted. I came here. I got my education. And my plan really is to return to my home country. That's, <laughs> that's the end. <laughs> that's the problem right there. That's the problem right there. Why, is that, problem? Why is that a problem? Why is that a problem? I came here, I paid my dues, I paid okay, my taxes. Yeah, I paid so for I, my education. When things go Why is bad that a problem? United, when things go bad in the United States of America, the first thing a lot of immigrants want to do is run. They get their other passport and they want to return to their country and they leave black Americans other black immigrants are about here by ourselves. I also want to say, I know there's been this thing about immigrants, legal and illegal, bring jobs. Guess what? There has not been one study showing that they are bringing jobs that hire black Americans. There have been studies shown, and you can look up Duke University did a study in 2006, 2007, showing that a lot of illegal immigrants, these were mainly Hispanics, Latinos, said over 70%. And this is Greenville, South Carolina, um, Durham, North Carolina. Black Americans were not hardworking, were lazy, were problematic, commit a lot of crimes. Over 70% of them said that. So not only is illegal immigrants taking resources from Black Americans, 
they are also coming here with anti-Black views that they bring from their whole nation. And even some Black immigrants come here with anti-Black American views. That has been shown in survey after survey. They'll be told, don't hang around. Let me ask Samuel here. American Thank you, Marcel. Here. Let me ask Samuel, do you believe that immigrants, uh, documented or undocumented, uh, have anti-racist, uh, have racist views of American Blacks? I mean, I, I think that that statement is too broad of a statement to be true. Um, if you oh. say there are a few or there are some, that may be a more accurate statement. But um, I cannot say I say whether I, I deny or approve that statement. I mean, it, it, it may be, but I think I don't think that's something that we should put on on, on all immigrants that come here. I mean, you know, these of folks are hard not. work. Go ahead. No, I, was I never said at all. Um, uh, Tariq, listen. Uh, Kenda has a point when she says, why are we blaming the immigrants? It's not the immigrants' fault. It is America's fault. So they, this is what America has allowed. So why are we mad at immigrants? And as I started off the segment, I said white supremacist culture will weaponize them. I always put the blame on white supremacist culture because they use immigration as a form to undermine us. Black people in the 1960s, that's when we first started to put the cape on for black immigrants because we wanted more black people to come over here to act as reinforcements in the civil rights movement. We had great people like Stokely Carmichael and others who were riding with foundational black Americans. And we thought we need more of those brothers and sisters over here. We were pushing the Pan-Africanism line. When they started to allow other immigrants from Africa and the Caribbean to come over here, they started to screen them and made sure they brought the ones over here who had an anti-foundational Black American mentality so that they can use them against us. So it has become a problem now that the people that's coming over from Africa and the Caribbean, they're not acting as reinforcement. They look at us as another hostile tribe. And we're now realizing we can't have that type of energy from them or any other immigrant group. We have Let's to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I'm Tammy Mack. And the business of being black today is illegal Im immigration. Is it harming America? Please welcome managing attorney at the Elira Law Firm and candidate Prince George's County Councilman at Large, Samuel Q. Elira, educator and South Carolina 6th U.S. Congressional District candidate, George, or rather Greg, Marcel Dixon, managing attorney at Valauza and Associates, Kenda Valauza, and film director and producer, Tariq Nasheed, is with us today. Um, Kenda, do you believe that there is a uh, racism attached to, to immigrants based off of uh, the perception of Black Americans in America? I'm going to shut that down right now, Tammy. That is not true. The whole reason we in the Caribbean, we don't even understand racism. We don't deal with racism. When we come to America, that's when we realize, okay, wait, we're Black and this person is white and this person is this and this person is that. We don't deal with racism. So I don't understand where he's getting that information from, but I'm yet to meet an immigrant. The, the ones from the country that I've came from, the ones that I've been working with as my clients that has spoken any single thing negative about Black America. And a matter of fact, if you were to bring up any conversation about racism with an immigrant, they will tell you, I'm staying out of that because we don't know anything like that. We, we, we're we not familiar me. with racism. Tariq, go ahead. In the Caribbean, there's so much racism over there, especially in those Hispanic countries where they treat the black people like trash. Exactly. In those Caribbean, those Caribbean countries, they're running around with cake soap, trying to lighten themselves up. That's a reflection of the racism that's there. Those places are colonized. You go there, it's East Indians and Asians running everything over there. They know exactly what racism is. That's why they're trying to get out of there to come over here to the people who fight racism, which is foundational black Americans. Well, let, 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 let me say this. Let, let, let me say right this. Um, first and foremost, um, you know, these folks, the idea that they, these folks from these other countries have about America, they have a, a perspective like this is the, the greatest land in the world, you know, and, 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 and money grows on trees. Like they have such love in, 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 for, for, for America. So there's, there's no racism or any negative mindset like but that. But the question is, what, what is, is that white America or is that America? Into America, America in general. Hey, and, 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 and let, listen, listen. When we talk about when we talk about the, the the fight of racism, let's let's not forget. Like I said, I'm from Haiti. 
And if you don't know much about Haiti, the first black freed republic where slaves revolted and took over the island, fought Napoleon Bonaparte, kicked out the British, all right, the France. So we know but about America, the America has not had has not been kind to Haiti. And and we and, and you have to no. understand why. Yeah, because after after the slave revolution, revolution revolution, you know, we was giving free citizenship to folks to come to Haiti, and we was going out, you know, helping other folks freeing their islands. Whether it's Argentina, we, we fought in every in, in so many uh, different countries, civil wars, and allowed them to gain their freedom. So of course, they, 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 there's no love there for us. You know, right. you so got to tell the whole story. My question then becomes: Hold that thought. My question becomes: uh, You just explained how other countries, and particularly your own Haiti, uh, thinks of. Uh, America, how it's this wonderful, beautiful land and then money grows on trees and there's freedom in this. And I say, but America's not been kind to your people. And you say, yeah, but you got to understand why. But why would your people want to enter a country that's not been kind to them? I think what it is, 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 is the is the lack of opportunity. There's nothing. So and, and the point I was trying to make earlier, I have cousins who've graduated, you know, with, with, with masters of different to high top degrees, but yet there's nothing there, no work, no nothing. They, they cannot support their family. So imagine if they're able to go to somewhere where they could even work at McDonald's or make any type of living at all for their family, they will take that opportunity, notwithstanding the fact that they have these degrees. And that's the point of that. that I think that's the, that, that's the core of the point we was trying to make. It wasn't, you know, more so that, you know, we're, we're, we're coming here and taking other jobs or we don't think that uh, African-Americans here don't work. It's just that the it's a different mindset for these other folks coming from these other countries. Uh, Marcel, you have to agree that there has to be a different mindset from someone coming from a country that is that that lacks everything that America has to offer. Um, there has to be a different mindset, just like uh, in America, when you come from a poor neighborhood, your mindset is different than when you're grown, uh, uh, when you're growing up with a silver spoon in your mouth. So you have to agree that there's a completely different mindset. Yeah, that's a diff completely different mindset. All right. One, I want to say something. Uh, Kenda, Guyana has historic racism between Indians and the black Guyanese people there. So you know racism very well. Two, my platform talks about holding employers accountable that hire illegal immigrants. So I am going after the companies. And three, Tammy, yes, there is a different mindset and that there is the problem. We as black Americans, descendants of American slaves, we are freedmen as we're called, we have historically fought for what we are owed from the American government. We had many opportunities to leave. We had the opportunity to go to Liberia. Abraham Lincoln wanted to send us to South America and the Caribbean. And even in more modern times, some people said we should go to Mexico because we can get better opportunities there. We resisted all those things and said, no, we're going to fight for what we are due here. Unfortunately, some black immigrants come here and their attitude is, I just want to make a living and do good for myself. They don't come here with the attitude that I'm going to help black Americans fight for what they're due. When, but why should they? I don't understand why they and, should. That's what I'm about to get to right now. Oh, man, you just asked a good question. One, that's why Samuel that's what they're Elira, fighting for. <laughs> Samuel Elira being from Haiti, he should definitely come in here wanting to side with Black Americans. Because when the U.S. invaded Haiti, it was Black American soldiers who refused to participate in that, in, in that invasion. Matter of fact, Black Americans gathered and petitioned United Nations to get out of Haiti. When any other continent, Ethiopia was being conquered, Black Americans armed ourselves, even though we were going through our own struggles, and we went over and helped Ethiopians fight against the Italians. But when Black immigrants come here, not all of them, but some of them, they don't join in our battles for reparations the government owes us. They sometimes side with these anti-Black politicians and will buy into anti-Black American stereotypes. All right, like hold, that thought, hold that thought, Marcel. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Hard work. Hold that thought. Kenda, I know you have something to say on that. No, I, I'm, I don't know where he is getting that information from, but you, know, you did ask the question, Tammy. Um, why should black? Why should immigrants come to America and pick up in or, or, and get into the fight for Black Americans? Um, coming here and going to college in the United States, I realized that when I would talk anything or try to get into any American politics, um, Black Americans. They would tell me, you know what, you're not qualified to speak on this topic because you're an immigrant. You don't understand the struggles. You don't this, you don't that. 
and mm -hmm. I'm and I've maintained not even discussing anything about Black America, the politics. I have nothing to say about Black Americans. Like I said, I haven't met any immigrant that had anything negative to say about Black Americans. So I'm not sure where Marcel is getting his information from. And this Tariq, is the let let Tariq go ahead. And listen. Foundational Black Americans, we've always fought for all of these other groups, even though we go through our struggle here. The Black Seminoles went down into Mexico fighting to help protect the Mexican border. You had Black people like David Fagan, who went over to the Philippines and defected from the U.S. Army and defended the Filipinos when they were being attacked by the U.S. government. You had people like Muhammad Ali, who put his career on the line because he refused to fight the people over there in Vietnam. You always have Black people putting on the cape and, and putting their lives on the line to fight for other groups in other countries. But when they come over here, the whole thing is, well, why should we help you? We're trying exactly. to get ours. And that is the problem. Samuel, and, go ahead. Uh, Samuel, I, I think it's, it's Martin Luther King who said this: "Injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere." I don't think we should have Marcel. We should have a mindset where you know we should be so negative towards you know folks from these other countries. I mean, listen, we appreciate. We know what Black Americans went through here. I mean, four hundred plus years of slavery, Jim Crow. We we know what went, went went here, and we know the injustice that continue to happen to us while we all here. So we all all in this together. So I think that we have to be supportive and collaborative. We all should come together in reparation for folks in, in America. Yes, of course we support that. I mean, we, 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 we cannot sit here looking the way we are and, and, and not, not appreciate what folks have, have, have the struggle. And, that and, here's, and here's the problem. And here's the problem, Sam. That the narrative is that we're all in this together until you get resources for your group. We're all in this together unless it's something negative. Now, if it's something negative, we all have to absorb all of the negativity that comes from all these different Black groups. If you get a PhD, you become a scholar, then you separate yourselves from us. So that's another narrative that we have to get into. Hold well, that James, thought. Hold well, that thought. We got to go to commercial break. We got to go to commercial break. Um, I think Black Americans start separating themselves, too, when they get them PhDs. But we'll talk about <laughs> it when we come back on Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I'm Tammy Mack. And the business of being black today is immigration harming America. Ooh. Friday, a district judge ruled that the Biden administration must continue to turn away migrants due to the COVID-19 related health measure first implemented under former President Donald Trump. Judge, uh, a judge agreed that if the order is lifted, it will hurt the states by increasing costs related to health care, driving license, uh, education and increasing migrant numbers at the border. What do we think about this, Tariq? I think that they should turn people away because again, we have to absorb a lot of negative stuff that comes through. Um, a lot of these undocumented immigrants are coming over here with COVID, spreading COVID. We don't know who they are. We can't trace them. We can't track them, among other things. So yeah, I, I agree with that. That's the one thing I agree with with the Biden administration, which I don't like the Biden administration at all because of the benign neglect policies they have against foundational Black Americans. But that's one thing I do agree. Well, with. I, I mean, this was implemented under Donald Trump's administration. So you can still hate the Biden administration if you like. Yes, um, indeed. <laughs> it gives you permission to continue to hate the Biden administration. Uh, immigrant rights advocates have argued that uh, Title 42 is illegal because it prevents people from exercising their international right to claim asylum. And the decision delivered a blow to the administration's plan to end the controversial program on May 23rd. So what are your thoughts about this, Kenda? Um, I support the advocates. At the end of the day, um, the asylum process is in court. If you lock immigrants out, you leave them in Mexico, then they have no access to immigration attorneys. They have no access to the, to the judicial system. And, you know, even though there's judges um, in those situations, they do um, Zoom court or whatever the situation is, it leaves them at a, it leaves immigrants as, at a disadvantage because really and truly there are immigrants who are fleeing gang violence, they're fleeing rape, they're fleeing domestic violence, and they deserve a day in court and they deserve their representation in court. And if they're there and immigration attorneys are here to represent them, then how do we get access to them? How do we make sure that they're getting the justice that they deserve through the immigration court system? 
And why, the, why is that our responsibility to do that for them? Why don't they do that in their homeland? Because well, immigration let, let me, let me laws will let, 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 let me let me let Kenda answer the question since it was posed to her. Go ahead, Kenda. No, I'm saying because immigration law exists. There's immigration laws. And so that's why they should have access to the immigration court. There's immigration laws, there's immigration court, there's immigration judges. So these things are in play, in place by the federal government for them to have the benefits of it. And what benefits would they have if they're out in Mexico, unable to get the access to the courts or the judges or the lawyers to try their cases? Go ahead, Samuel. I was going to suggest to Tariq, you forget that the United States plays, uh, has a role in the destruction and the, and, 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 uh, of, of, if not, I don't want to say every country out there, but the majority of these countries out there who are impoverished and, and, and who are suffering, the United States played a role in that. So yes, they, they, they should come, come in and, and save and, and, and give oh. incentives to this country. But here's what I don't agree with. Hold on, Tariq. Hold on. Okay. Like, okay. Okay. Here's here's what I, what I don't agree what I don't agree with is the inconsistency across the board with which the, the opportunity opportunities that are pre presented, because you see with the Ukraine and these different type of European countries, they've given them, you know, free access. Or you could come here, you know, free, have free work visa and this, these different type of things. But then when the Haitians, Haitians came in the border, these other people who, who see the same opportunity, they are turned away and they are treated like slave or, or less than. So that's an issue. That's the inconsistency, inconsistency that I have issue with. And another thing that's inconsistent, they always try to say, well, the U.S., they indirectly harm these countries, but the countries that really harm the, the Caribbean, some of these other South American islands, Spain and France, y'all never go there. Why is that? There's a question posted to me, so we never go oh, there. Yes, yes. How come y'all don't go to the countries that directly colonize you? Well, here's, here's, here's what I will say about, if I, if I could speak on the Haitians. I mean, if you look, Florida is only a few uh, minutes <laughs> from uh, Haiti, so uh, it's, it's <laughs> proximity. <laughs> like you the travel is shorter. Land border. I'm going to take the border to Mexico. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. So I, I, that's my answer. It's difficult to get to, to, to these other places to read. <laughs> oh, okay. So the, the proximity. Y'all just come to the place with the closest proximity. And it um, makes sense because we have immigrants that are walking from uh, from Guatemala, from Honduras. So at the end of the day, it is proximity. How else, if they're poor, they're broke, they're fleeing from from um, all the destruction, how are they, suppo how are they supposed to get to Europe? I have a question. You, you can, you so can go to Brazil. You can go to Brazil. You're not going to Brazil. You're going here because you have a group of people, Foundation of Black Americans, who's actually fighting racism and giving you the opportunity to come over here and be successful. I would, I would like to ask, I would like to ask, that's an interesting point. So I, uh, Samuel, uh, you, you gave kudos to black America and all that they've gone through in America, but Kendall, I do, yes. so Kenda, I do want to ask you, um, amongst immigrants and particularly those from, uh, Ghana, uh, do you think that there is a sense of, um, gratefulness and thankfulness, uh, for black America? Because it, it I've never heard that point that Tariq just made that you come here because people are fighting for the freedoms of colored people. And I say colored because I'm, I'm speaking specifically of anyone of color, uh, people of color. Is, is that a reason um, to come to America? Because you know that black Americans consistently fight for, for the freedoms of colored people? Um, so just to correct you, it's, I'm from Guyana. Guyana, Guyana. Guyana. sorry. Yes, but, Amer but we come to this country you know, I could say it over and over um, because of opportunities. And another reason is because of uh, security. Um, my clients, they always tell me that they come here because they know that the laws are in place and that the laws would protect them and that their countries um, are lawless. So that's the reason why they come here. Um, the police force in um, Honduras, Guatemala, those countries, um, they collude with the criminals. So they come here specifically for protection. And again, um, they're not thinking about Black Americans. They're not thinking that's about the problem. Um, that, that's Black the problem. Americans that's the problem. and their fight. They're so, fleeing for their Hold on, let her finish. Let her finish. Let her finish her thought. Go ahead. Yeah. They're fleeing for their lives. I'm not saying that anyone sits there and, and Google the history and all of that. They just really want to come here for opportunities because 
you know, of, of everything that's happening in their country because of all the insecurities. That's the only reason why they come here. Nobody picks up a book and try to figure out the racism situation and this and that. Everything that Marcel is saying and that Tyreek is saying is what they have all in their heads and, and what is discussed in the American society. But uh, immigrants, they are so thankful for America. They see this place as their knight and shining armor and they spend so much money and just trying to get to the land of opportunities. They're not thinking about, you know, Amer the, the black Americans this and the black Americans that, and that we're looking at them any lower. That's not the situation time Marcel? at all. There's, there is data showing that they actually do come here with anti-black American racism. And just because these liberals, usually white liberals, and I'm running as a Democrat, but usually white liberals try to tell us that immigration, illegal immigration is so good for black America, it's a lie. And three, Samuel and Ken, that you both mentioned how they come from poverty and gang violence and drugs. Black Americans have gone through those same things for centuries that were inflicted upon our communities. So tell me, Kendall, tell me, Samuel, where should we run away to? Where can we go to get refuge? Hmm? Well, I don't think I don't think you guys should. I don't think Black Americans should run away anywhere. I mean, th th this country was built on on the backbones of, of, of Black America. So this so is why should immigrants so leave their country then if they built their nation? Then they need to stay in their nation and build oh, their nation up. Well, well, Marcel, and, and his this is the point that we're trying to make. You ignore or you fail to 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 appreciate or acknowledge what Kenda and what 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 I'm trying to impress upon you that there are a lack of. And we keep saying opportunity. The rule of law in this country works. The rule of law works Not for Black Americans. No, no, Breonna no. Taylor just listen, got listen, killed. Listen. Breonna Taylor was killed in her apartment not bothering a soul, and they got away with it. A mayor lock was sleeping, and they busted it. Let them finish. Let them finish, Marcel. Go ahead, Samuel. When, when, when I say the rule of law works, not to say we have a perfect criminal justice system. You know, you know, we are, I'm an attorney. Ken is an attorney. We can tell you that the, the criminal justice system is not perfect, but it works. I can tell you. It, 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 it works, right? And compared it's, to these it's other a little, it's a, I have to say, Samuel, it's a little laughable to tell a Black person in America that the rule of law works. But <laughs> I'll tell you. you what does work, a commercial break right now. So we'll be right <laughs> back on Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack on Fox Soul. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack. I am Tammy Mack. Samuel, you wanted to make some clarifications before we move on. Go right ahead, please. Yes, yes. When I indicated earlier that the rule of law in, in this country, in the United States, works, I believe it works. And, and I don't think the issue is, is with the rule of law. It's with the people who enforces the, 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 the law or, or within the system that, that, that makes it flawed. Um, but the comparison I was trying to make is these other countries, I mean, there is, there is no rule of law. There's, 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 there's destruction all throughout. So of course, you know, they appreciate when they come here and they are able to um, 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 go through the system and, and, and get the, the proper uh, means that, that, that they like. I think that's something they appreciate. Uh, uh, Marcel, you had some numbers for us from the FBI. I want to say the FBI released a memo in 2006 saying that white supremacists and white extremists had infiltrated police departments throughout the nation. Now I agree. The FBI, which has an, a history of being anti-Black itself. And I agree. And that's why I say it's the people in, in those positions that that, 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 um, that that makes it, that corrupts the, the system, but, it, but the system itself in, a, in, 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 in this, in this, in this uh, 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 naturalness is, is, a good, is a good system, is a good rule of law. But it's just the Any people- It has a judicial system. Guyana has a judicial system. Mexico has a judicial system. You want to talk about a country that puts immigrants out? Mexico puts out more immigrants. 15 million go Guatemalans, Belizeans, Hondurans. Mexico puts them out. The system is as good as the people. Y'all are talking about some America's a land of opportunity. Tell Black Americans that who have not had the opportunity. And yet we vote 90, 95% for the Democrats. And in California, where Black people only 3% of the population, over 55% of the homeless, that governor, whatever his name is, Newsom, whatever, he did a separate $40 billion package just to give people in the country illegally stimulus checks because they couldn't get it from the federal government. What is he doing about the black people on the street? There is currently a proposal in California to extend unemployment benefits to undocumented immigrants. So uh, there is truth to that. Uh, Tariq? 
You want to weigh in? Yes, indeed. We, we have a problem out here where other groups are prioritized over foundation of Black Americans. We are dealing with vile hate crimes left and right out here. Every other day, there's a Karen video, somebody harassing a Black person. We just had that shooting up there in Buffalo, which they have not deemed that as a hate crime yet. There's Black women being beat down in Florida by white supremacist males. They have not deemed those as hate crimes. We're campaigning to the Biden administration to either give us reparations or a hate crime bill. They keep ignoring us, but the Biden administration and the Democrats and the liberals, they're allocating money to Afghanistanians, Ukrainians, Hispanic groups, and all other groups except foundational Black Americans. So when do we say it is time for us, foundational Black Americans, to get something specific from the government that we built? There's nothing wrong with that. And we shouldn't have to prioritize other groups just because of the stuff that they've got going on back in their homeland. That's unfortunate, but that's their problem and let them deal with that there. Can I hate to say this, we talk about white extremists. How about in California, you got Latino gangs that yeah. are running Black Americans out of neighborhoods that were historically Black. Some of them are not even in the country illegally. And yet Joe Biden, who said he was going to have Black Americans backs, he's done executive orders prioritizing people in the country illegally, but not Black Americans. And when I say my campaign slogan, repair Black America to fix America, I get more flack from people who are fellow Democrats telling me about illegal immigrants than for people who are white Republicans. The people Kenda, who are uh, Kenda, I want to ask you, I want to ask you, Kenda, do you, do you see um, why Black America in, in as representative of Marcel and Tariq, um, do you see why they feel the way they feel or is there no validation to that? No, absolutely. I, I listen to my friends, uh, my Black American friends, and I certainly, I, I understand how they're feeling. But at the end of the day, it's not the immigrants' problems. You guys are putting every single thing on the immigrants. You got to take it back to the employers. You got to take it back to your government. You got to take it to, to your to your councilmen. That's why You're I'm doing a good job, Marcel. If you want to make changes, you got to get in office. You guys got to stop complaining about going on jury duty. You got to stop complaining about going out to vote. Because if changes are going to be made, it got to be made from on top. Stop blaming the immigrants. Oh, wait a minute. So, no, oh, hold on, on, Marcel. Like I don't, I don't think I have time for that. Kenda, tell us about your book, The 10 Things Immigrants Should Know Before Coming to America, please. So my book, Tammy, thanks for asking. It's a guide for immigrants. Well, not undocumented immigrants, but for documented immigrants that are coming to the United States. Like I mentioned earlier, um, we don't have tax systems. We don't have um, credit systems. We don't have credit cards, all that good stuff. So my book is the 10 most important things that you should know, which includes um, credit, how it works in the United States, taxes, like the filing deadline, when you should or should not be... Um, filing for your taxes and how important it is. Um, also how to start a business um, uh, gre uh, and the immigration okay. process, even job hunting. So it's primarily a guide. Tariq, do you have any projects coming up we should know about? Yes, indeed. And then page one on her book should be how to find a foundation of Black Americans who didn't fought for everything and built everything for you everybody. Can you can write one. your very own <laughs> book. You could write your it is. My book. My book is called, I have a book. It's called Foundational Black American Race Beta. That's the cover right there. You can get it on Amazon. Foundational Black American Race Beta available right now. Good. I'll get a copy. Samuel, yes, tell us, uh, uh, you are also a candidate for county councilman. Yes, yes. Candidate for county councilor in Lodge for Prince George County. Prince George County is in Maryland, and we have, you know, Prince George County is one of the wealthiest uh, counties in the country. But yet, when we look around, the wealth is not expressed throughout. So uh, for me, and, and I appreciate what everybody here is, is saying, you know, we, we have to be the change we want to see. And when I look around my county, I'm resolved, you know, you know, things are not where it needs to be. If these folks in the office, they don't care about the regular folk. So many people who truly care, and that, that's why, you know, what propelled me to public life and wants to really, you know, do, make a positive difference. So, um, you know, we have to be the change we want to see. And I appreciate what Marcel is doing uh, and, and other works that you know, Tariq is doing, what is, is, is by literature, writing, because, you know, we, the, we have been dealt, the, you know, wrongly, you know what I mean? The end of the stick, so to speak. And, 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 and like I indicated earlier, we African-Americans and, and, and have all the backbones of this country. We've done a lot, but, but yet we still um, are treated unfairly and discrimination and injustice all throughout. So we got to keep fighting. Uh, to Understood. Marcel, you're fighting uh, in your district. So please talk about it. Yes, I'm running. My slogan is repair Black America to fix America. You go to MarcelForCongress.com. 
please leave a donation. I'm running because I'm tired of my people being ran over. And we talk about white supremacists. It's time to talk about these illegal immigrants that are anti-Black as well. And just one point I want to make, um, Kenda, don't tell Black Americans we need to get out and vote when illegal immigrants can't vote and they get more policies than Black Americans do. And not, I'm not just going to say they get more policies than Americans do, period. If we're going to put trillions of dollars into a group of people, it should be Americans, white, Black, whatever. Whatever. Okay. So how do we bring this together? How do we resolve this? How can uh, America and immigrants get along in one word? I'll give you three, three words, Tariq, three words. Um, Bill your own. Samuel, <laughs> Samuel. Look, we all are in this together. In uh, this together. Got it. In this together. Kenda, what you got? Fix your government. No, I, look, I'm, on, I'm with Kendall on that. Fix your government. Marcel, three words. What you got for me? Reparations, protection, and deportations. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Vivica Fox is up next with the Fox Soul Screening Room. Thank you so much, Marcel, Kenda, Tariq, and okay. Samuel. That's it for Business of Being Black with Tammy Mack on Fox Soul. Until next time, it's truly a blessing to be in your box. Bye, y'all. Have hey, a great day. Fantastic day.